G'day. Today we're going to take a look at the Archer Camping Area, situated in Diagula National Park, which is about 90 minutes drive from Brisbane CBD. This is one of my favourite campgrounds, especially if I'm camping with a group of people. Now access to this camping area can be reached by a conventional vehicle from the north via Woodford, and this is the route that you're seeing now, or from the south via the Gantry. Now they say that this route is accessible by four-wheel drive only, but I have seen two-wheel drive do it as well. Now you just got to take it a lot slower and ensure that the conditions are not wet. Now you'll know you've reached the campground by this sign on your left which is about 2k into the National Park entrance. Um, especially if you're coming here at night it can be quite daunting thinking am I even in the right place. It's pretty secluded, pretty windy but yeah keep pressing on you'll see this sign. Now you will require a permit to camp in the National Park. And these can be obtained online at www.qld.gov.au forward slash camping or over the counter at a Queensland Parks booking office or self-serve kiosk or you can give them a call on 137468. Now at the time of this video it's only $6.65 per person per night or $26.60 per family of four to six people. And being a national park there are no pets allowed. You can however have a fire. On this particular trip, there was a total fire van, as indicated at the information booth at the front, and there were signs up throughout the campground as well. There are nine numbered campsites spread over an open grassy area. Each site can have a maximum of six people, and all sites have a car park, which are also numbered as well. There's an amenities building, providing male, female, and disabled toilets. Now these are flushing toilets, not the usual long drop that you see in national parks. There's also tank water on site, but you will need to boil this before drinking. Also in the amenities building is a shower cubicle. There's no shower in there, you'll need to bring your own, but it does have drainage and privacy. The amenities block is situated in the middle point of the campground between campsites four and five. The grounds are set up for tent camping only. Cars are unable to go beyond the car park area. The car parks I have found long enough to park with a box trailer though, in case you need one of those to fit all your camping gear in. Campsite 9 has a double width car park, I reckon you could fit there with a rooftop tent out the side of the vehicle if you wanted to. Each campsite has a designated fire ring. Fires are permitted only in these fireplaces provided, except when there's a fire ban of course. You need to bring your own firewood, as it's illegal to collect wood from the National Park. You may also want to bring a grill to place over the top to cook on. Now here's a prime example of what not to do. Never leave your trash behind. Seriously, it doesn't take much to pack it back out with you. You clearly fit that box in the car in the first place to get it here, and I'm sure that beer carton wasn't empty and flat packed when you arrived. So for God's sake, take your rubbish out of the bush with you so that we can enjoy it for generations to come. At the end of the campground, near tent site 9, is access to a swimming hole. Now it starts quite shallow as you enter and it gets very deep towards the other side. I'm 6'1 and I can't stand on the far side. There's also a rope swing that someone's rigged up. Now when I last used this the water was deep enough for me, but you should always check thoroughly first and there are signs around warning you against this. There's plenty of room to sit on the banks and watch the kids as well. So, as you can see, Archer Campground is an open, grassy, family-friendly, natural bush setting. This campground is ideal if you have a large group of people going. You can book sites side by side and all camp together as a group. I once came here with 54 people and there was plenty of room for everybody. Now, when you book your site, you'll be asked to select a site number. They're all basically similar. Um, if you want a long car park to accommodate a trailer, go for site 5 or site 1. If you want to be as far away from anyone else, go for Site 1. If you want to camp with a rooftop tent or you're coming with two cars, go for Site 9. Um, and there's also access to another section of the river via Campsite 2. Anyway, that's it from me for now. If you like my content, hit like. If you want to see some more, click subscribe, hit the little bell notification symbol. And until next time, get out there and enjoy.